All right, here we go. YK Osiris, welcome back to Vlad TV. What's up, man? Long time no see, man. Long time. It was September of 2018. That's crazy. When time you got here, right when you got signed to Def Jam. Time went by fast. Man, I remember in the beginning, you were like brand new. You were kind of nervous. Yeah. And, you know, you hadn't really gotten to your groove yet. We didn't really know your personality yet. Right. You know, but, but now look at you. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Six times platinum? Yeah. Oof. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So uh, how does it feel to, to go from, you know, growing up in Jacksonville to, to having dreams of, of making it to, to having songs that are getting like 300 million views? And... Um, It's a blessing, man. It's like coming from where I come from because I ain't really have, you know, like everything I wanted. You know, I, had, I got six sisters. I'm the only boy, so... You know, Duval, you know, Duval, Jacksonville, it's crazy out of like. So um just just becoming who I am now just is is incredible because I came a long way. And it's crazy because I manifested this. I already knew I was gonna be rich. I already, I already knew I was gonna be, you know, um um where I'm at now. I, I was just saying it all my life to everybody that is that I'm gonna I'm gonna get it. Like I'm gonna win. Like I'm gonna do it. Like one way or another, like I gotta get out of my city. I gotta win, and I gotta get this money because I was tired of being broke. Yeah, I mean, because I interview artists from Jacksonville, you know, Fuyo and you know, uh, Young and Ace and so forth. And I feel like you never got involved in all the the craziness that kind of went on in there. You know, yeah. I mean, you really just stay out of that bullshit yeah. and just really just had fun. When you see on the internet, you're you're just smiling, you're laughing, you're not. Smoking on ops or, or anything else yeah. like that, you just you just don't really play that. I mean, how how did you really sort of avoid all the craziness? But you know, growing up in that same type of area like that, man, it's crazy, man. I just never been in that type of beef. I never been in that type of that type of environment. But yeah. when I was younger, I always been in fights too. It's crazy. I always been like more. Um, I always been in altercations like for my sisters. You know what I mean? For different reasons. But I was bad. Like you can even ask. Julio, you even ask, like, bro, been seeing me since yeah, high. Like, um, all of them young and age, you'll tell you the same thing. Like, I was bad, bro. Like, you know, I just never been in that type of beef, like that type of um animosity towards others. So it, it, it was it was fun, man. And me growing up, just being happy and me being smiling is, I think, you know, you know, everybody just loves that and I just bring happiness out of everybody else. Well, I mean, the songs that you dropped were were massive. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we talked about six times platinum, but I mean, we're talking about, I mean, hold on, let me just look up some of the numbers here. You know, the, the numbers are just sort of insane. I mean, when you look at, let's just pull up your numbers real quick. Worth It is at 270 million views. Yeah. Valentine is at 100 million views. Uh, you know, run it up, 15 million views. Timing, 18 million views. You know, Lovers of Friends that you're featured on, 13 million views. Yeah. Like, like these are these are big boy numbers. Yeah. You know, like when you were making some of these songs, did you know that it was gonna be like massive like that? Or mm. are you kind of surprised everyone else to a certain degree? It went by so fast, man. I just knew worth it was the one, though. I knew that, like, off the rip. I knew when I did that, like, yeah, this the one, right? This is the one. Like, I, I just knew that. Like, that was easy for me to know. But um, the other ones, I was going my groove. I, I feel like back in that time of my life, I was in a, like, um, grind mode. Like, I was like, I needed, like, I need this hit. Like, I, I, I got to get this hit. Like, I was just fiending for it so bad. So it just came. And I'm grateful for it, but I, I was just just I was just on my grind. It's it's, it's going crazy, man. You know, um, what really changed? Because I remember when we had our first interview, and you didn't get into numbers, but you said the Def Jam gave you a, a big, big bag. Yeah. Was it a big check up front? Yeah, it was a big, big, big check. <laughs> you threw three bigs in there. Yeah. Three bigs. A big, big, big check. Three big checks. What did you do when you when you first uh, you know deposited that money in the bank and you know you could actually pull some out? Um, I went to Louis V store and spent fifteen thousand. Okay. When I first got my check, I went to Louis V store. So, how did you spend your first million dollars? Um, man, I spent that thing quick. Well, that thing went like within like eight months. Um, 
you blew through a million in eight months. Yeah. yeah. And you're how old at that time? I was 18. 18 years yeah, old. 18. So you do not give an 18 year old a million dollars. That, yeah, that is not yeah. always the best idea. Yeah, I went like quick to like like taxes, 200. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's going off the roof. Well, really? you know, well, well, I guess Florida, you, you get a little bit of a break. Gave my mama like 100, 120. Yeah. Gave my daddy like 100. Okay. So that's yeah. half half gone right yeah, there. It's already gone. You got yeah. half a million left. Yeah. It is. So so where's the rest going? Spent spent almost a hundred of clothes, and shoes, and stuff. Passing like during the time, um, just buying unnecessary and unnecessary, and unnecessary things. Just like don't make any type of sense. And then by the time you know it, I call my accountant. <laughs> yeah, you need some more money. Like, what was the, if you look at, like, all your purchases, right? I mean, I can think of all the dumb shit I bought over the years. Like, what was the single thing that you wish you could just rewind and <laughs> say, let me just not buy that? Um, to be honest with you, man, I don't rewind nothing. Really? Like, nah. Like, um, I always attract money, man. Like, like I always get it. Like, like, like I, it's just always been in me, but I never would go back and rewind certain things because it was, it was already ready. Well, all, well, all would happen, it's supposed to happen. And I look at it as it's making me better in life. And if you know, and you just learn from the things, just, you know, you just move on and, you know. Okay, because didn't you lose like a, a $325,000 earring at yeah, one point? Like 300, yeah, 300,000. Okay, is that the earring nah, that you were No, these are not 300. These, I got spun way less than like, like 80. Okay, like, like 300. I'm trying to think, because I know, I know diamonds a little bit. What is that, like six, seven carats? It was six carats a piece. There yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm, so both Flawless. earrings got lost? Flaw, uh, yeah. No, nah, um, one of them got lost. And um, I had other places, like, it was some crazy stuff. Like, Sharon's just gave me both of, for both of them. Okay, so how do you lose? So so was that one earring 300 or both of them 300? Both. Okay, both. so it's like yeah. 165, yeah. whatever. Okay, yeah. so so how did you lose a $165,000 earring? On a plane. Yeah, I was oh. sleeping. Yeah, and it just, it just dropped out. So you woke up. Woke up, went to the hotel. So, oh, you didn't even notice it was gone? Yeah, I didn't notice, I, I notice until like like three hours later. What type of panic did you have when you just realized you left a $160,000 earring Man, I don't uh, know. on a plane seat? I don't know. I'll never do it again, though. Okay. Were they insured? Yeah, they was insured, but sure. So yeah. you called the insurance company? Yeah. yeah and they I, gave you the money back? Quick. Quick. Quick, like within like two weeks. Okay, didn't Chad Johnson you kind of go back and forth over this? Yeah, Chad. Yeah, yeah. Well, he like get some clears, but I can't get no goddamn clears and rings, man. Well, he he's big on fake jewelry. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know if you ever heard this whole thing, but but he he actually and, and he has money, right? Yeah. He has millions of dollars. Yeah, but he's always said like. You know, even during his like NFL days, that he would buy fake Audemars and shit like that. And when he would go to the club, it'd have the same effect. So he just didn't give a shit. I you know, just, the girls are still fucking. I don't feel like there's nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah, a lot of these yeah I'm not tripping. Be, a lot of these niggas be wearing fake shit, man. Like, like it, you just gotta understand all this shit hit the same these days. Everything, you don't know what's real or what's fake these days, man. Like, niggas be having fake all type of shit. And they be all that cap shit, man. Niggas, niggas be, niggas be, I know, I know, I know a lot of niggas be wearing fake shit. Yeah, I've never I've never been in a fake shit myself, but you know, if you want to do it, I, I don't I don't really have a problem with it. You know? I used to wear fake shit though. You wore fake shit? Yeah, when I was younger. Yeah, I was like I used to like I feel like if I wear it, like I always kept on always kept um uh, um dollars in my pocket and pretend it was hundreds. Huh. Like, you know what I mean? Like I put the hundreds on top of my my dollars and like another hundred on on in the backside, make it look like it's all hundreds. And I used to wear like fake MCM bags. I used to wear fake Gucci. Like I used to wear all type of fake shit. And then I got a real now. I got a, I got it now. So like, now it's like, it's nothing. Like I just buy, buy it all. What about the uh, the Gucci jackets though? Oh, the Gucci, the Gucci jacket. <laughs> Man, that was a legendary jacket. Somebody bought that jacket for me. Right, cause, cause I'm gonna tell you like, like that, um, was it that Instagram live with you and 21 Savage? Was one of the funniest things yeah, yeah. I had seen. Me, twenty one must on the internet. Where you were like, I paid five thousand. He goes, man, he, that's that's highway robbery. Like, <laughs> like it was just you need to get your crazy. money back. Yeah, I love that nigga. That nigga crazy. Oh, um, but you would actually spend some real money on it. Yeah. Like, uh, how much did that jacket cost you? Like, I think almost like, I don't know. I think like three, 
two thousand some shit like that. Like as I was like it was a it was, it was a grip. I got the whole fit though, so the whole fit was cost like at least like like ten, like to the pants, to the shoes, to the jacket, to the hat. Is it that you just don't like like you just like the style of the custom shit more than like what Gucci actually put out? No, it was just. I thought the jacket was fine. I saw everybody else wearing it. Like, oh, like other people had that same yeah. jacket. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. Money bag, your money bag, yo had it. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't know that. Um, a lot of people had that, that that jacket, but it was a different type of, like, yeah, Louis V. I had Gucci. Yeah, I remember because uh, you know back in the day when you look at some of the old hip hop covers like Eric B. and Rakim and everything, like Dapper Dan out of Harlem, oh, that Dapper was his Dan. thing. Yeah, Dapper Dan. That he he would hook up. Like the, the yeah. custom Gucci, Louis, everything else like he that. He wanted made it like cool, like. You know. And then years later, Gucci actually gave him a deal. That's crazy. Did you, did you know that? No. He has his own store. I think in Har his own Gucci little custom, like you know, appointment only kind of joint, where Dapper Dan actually works for Gucci now, and he actually makes his real Gucci shit now. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Power hip hop. That's hard. You know what I mean? If you can't beat him, join him. That's crazy for real. Sorry, B. You know, I mean, I had Young Blue on, and uh, we talked about that whole situation. And he had his own little custom yeah, he got, something. Yeah, him too. Yeah, or, or whatever. And he was like, we was talking about you. He goes like, he's like, man, I love YK Osiris, but he got no swag. No, <laughs> YK Osiris can't fucking dress, bro. <laughs> nigga is a fucking swagless ass nigga. And that's my homeboy, so I can say that. Yo, the 21 Savage uh, yeah. commentary on that? Yeah. Yeah. Said, I spent 2000 We You need to get your money back. Yeah, no, nah, for <laughs> sure. That's armed robbery. He just put it together wrong, man. <laughs> Is that what it was? Yeah, I'm sorry. He had them big ass pants on, man, and them got that. Oh, the pants didn't really go with the with The, the pants wasn't even the same motherfucking color, man. <laughs> it, was like, it was a slightly different Gucci color. Yeah. That, that, was, that was his thing. And he think he got sweat. He, he claims he has sweat. That nigga got no goddamn sweat. <laughs> that nigga ugly as fuck. <laughs> well, Blue know he like that nigga. Oh my god! Like I like you know like, I know when he wake up. Like, it, like oh my god, bro, that nigga ugly as fuck, bro. Like I love that nigga ass, bro, but that nigga like a fuck it. That nigga like a fuck it. Oh, what, what kind of character he look like? Oh, uh, like he ugly as hell though. But he got a good voice, and the people love him, and I love him too. That's my brother, man. Like that, or any, like anything, anything you need, I got him. Like that's my boy. Yeah, but he is ugly as fuck. No comment. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to comment <laughs> you go, on no you, you, can, you agree with me, right? Uh, uh, no comment. I'm going to no comment my way out of this one. Right, I'm, right. I'm going to not comment. And, you know, I mean, listen, Boosie's a regular guest on my show. I know the two of them are kind of going at it a little bit. So I hope that they work their shit out. Oh, yeah, for sure. Me personally. You yeah. know, I've spoken to both of them at this point, And I hope they work their shit out because, uh, you know, they both good people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Blue is a solid nigga, man. I fuck with Blue, man. He, he, he go hard. He, you know, he just that, he, he like, he he deserve everything he have. Well, speaking of Boosie, why did you decide to do the crate challenge? Uh, what what on earth? Bruh. I, <laughs> I saw that shit. That shit was ugly, man. Uh, that, that shit, shit. looked. But, no, it it was just, like, you understand, it's me. Anything I do is, like, is, is like, lit. Like, I barely felt. Like, I didn't fall hard. Like, I felt. His, but, his son felt hard. That it, it was, it was like his son felt way worse than me, but yeah. I did it. It's like breaks the internet, like, it, like you know what I mean? Like, if, it's Osiris, like anything I do it just pops, so it's just make it look good. But I didn't, man, I got right back up as soon as I fell, got right back up. Uh, yeah, I, I feel you, I feel you. Um, you were what in, in Canada recently, yeah, Canada, yeah. Was it what, what is it, uh, with you and big girls? I love big girls, man. You love big girls. Yeah, man. I love it. Like, you got to open up, open up that 18 wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love big girls. You said an 18 wheeler. Yeah, I love it. They, 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 they show so much love, man. They so nice, man. I love them, man. They, they, they just, you know, I just want to hug them and just like grab them. It's like, it's like a big pillow. Like a pillow. I can just lay on them all I'm just, the I've had a few big girls in my day. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say all my girls have been dimes over yeah, the I, years. I, 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 I've had a few big girls. It is like. I had a big girl before. Yeah? Yeah, you know, back in the day. How big? How big? Let's see, let's see who had the biggest girl. Uh, like, like 220. Yeah, I think I was there right around 220. About 5'5", 220. Yeah. She's, she was cool as hell, man. She's cool. I remember. I remember. Yeah. I mean, it, it is it is like sort of being with a big soft pillow. 
Yeah. And, and I feel like they're more appreciative too. Like they yeah. like they like happy. They you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, because there's a video recently of that big girl twerking on you. Oh yeah. In the club. You're like, I don't know what happened here, but see like I had a good time. Yeah, she had a great time. I I, I love it. I love having fun. Right. And, and you're trying to slide into a Lizzo's. Lizzo, yeah. Yeah. If she responded. she got a man though, so it's all good. For now. Yeah, it's all good. For now. You yeah, might be now. the rebound. She know I'm here whenever. Oh, uh, so I feel like like 2019, that was the year that that everything came together. Yeah, exactly. and, and not only did your songs start blowing up, but but the features, yeah, was crazy. Yeah, uh, the baby showed up on one of your songs. Yeah, the baby. Yeah, and then you showed up on the baby song. Yeah, was it gospel was it? Gospel. Yeah, yeah it was, it was on me, Gucci Man, and the baby, and Chance the Rapper. What was that like? Cause cause you really like that song there. I mean, shit, Chance the Rapper has, what, two Grammys? Gucci is considered essentially the godfather of yeah, Atlanta Gangsta Rap. Like, the baby said, just hop on it. Like, it was hard, I said. It was hard, it was hard. So what, he just sent you the track and just... Yeah, I, just, no, we, I came to the studio, he just, I, you know, he just get on it. I mean, when you see, like, the, the trials and tribulations, people trying to cancel them and everything else like that, what's your take on that? Um... To be honest, like, bro, it's like, you know, people got their perspective, you know what I mean? Just, you know, it's life, man, things happen, but it's, you know, just keep moving forward and just keep your head up, but things happen. You just gotta, you just gotta go forward and just keep your head up. Feel you. Certain things you just can't do. And then you had a song called Shakira. Shakira, yeah. Which was one of your big songs. Yeah, Shakira too. Did you see what, what's happening with Shakira right now? What happened? Shakira oh, uh, is, uh, oh, was, allegedly owes $24 million in taxes. Damn. And is facing eight years in prison. I pray for her. She ain't gonna go to jail though, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. You and Drake sort of have an interesting relationship. Yeah, Drake my boy. How did that first come together? Um, Man, like I always say, we just, I just I just kept, kept coming around, bro. Like, Cause we weren't how close we was right now. We weren't close like that. Like, like um, two years ago, man. Like you know, he'd be like, man, it's, yeah. and I just come around him. And one day I came to Toronto. We just started kicking in. It, it went, it went there. You know, it just, just it was all vibes. Bro got good vibe. I got good vibes. It's just connection. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just like a little brother to bro. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's a good nigga, and you know, he deserves everything he had too. But you guys never actually did music together. No, no, we never did music. I don't really trip on the music part. Yeah, and I guess you never even asked him. No, I never asked him. Never. I mean, cause I, I can just imagine being Drake. It's like I can like it seems like every artist that's ever around him at some point is probably gonna try to, you know, find that right moment to ask him for a verse or hey, yo man, I got the song that'll you know, it, it must be annoying being someone like Drake, being essentially the biggest rapper in the world. I feel everyone like around you kind of wants something from you, but but that's not really your thing. Yeah, I feel like we're gonna do it. He gonna do it, man. Like he, he go off his vibe and go off his heart. I don't think he really like want that type of vibe. Like he, you got you you need to give him something, or he need to you no know, he need to give you something. Like it just vibes, bro. Bro, just he just genuine. If you're gonna do it, he just gonna do it. It's not about the money. He don't charge for features. Yeah, you're right. I mean, because I when I interviewed uh, Young Blue, the shit that he did for Blue was just yeah. He took here you go. Roof. And he said, here, and it's your song. So you sent it to him with the open verse. Mm -hmm. And he just sent it back the next day? Uh, yeah. That quick? He said, that well, back quick. Damn. So he yeah. didn't even have to even really sit on it or figure it out or whatever. He just... Man, he was excited. He was excited about it. Like He was excited about it for real, though. Yeah, I think that song was already out. Yeah, he jumped. Yeah, he just did a verse for it. Yeah. But when he when Drake did the first, that song it was, was already like, out before he even did it. Yeah, yeah, it I, I, I think you're right. But but he but he ended up doing I guess the remix. Mm -hmm. But he just did it. Off the I only think it's a remix. I, I just it was just he just we put out the song. Okay. Yeah, as a single. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember I interviewed Black Boy JB, and uh, Drake just gave him that song. It was yeah, like he do? he basically was like here, you know, because he was already working with uh, was it Take Keith. Yeah, that's what he did. And uh, he was already, like, Drake was already working with Take Keith, and they were working on some shit. And then they, they had uh, JB uh, jump on it. And he was like, here, it's your song. Run with it. You know, whatever. Oh, wow. 
That's what the boy do. Do a little paperwork and. He do stuff like that all the time. So the song, Look Alive, was that song already done? And did Drake jump on it afterwards? Or how, how did that whole thing happen? Man, actually, it was like a gift. Like, he was like, I was thinking it was going to be his song too, and to be honest. I was thinking it was gonna be a song too, cause like he he hit me up and like he wanted to work, and like I was like, okay, it's cool, but you know you know of course we're gonna jump on there, this Drake, but I was thinking like it was gonna be his song. He had like I was um on he had hit me up on Instagram like he had posted my shit on Instagram, and I was I had commented under the um like on the Insta story. You send it on, once you come in on Insta story, go to DM. So I had a uh, comment and said 100. He had hit me up so quick, like, and I had the song, like, the next day, like, it like, he just, like, he was ready. And so when I had hopped on, well, then I hopped on it the next day, bam, we was finna drop it. I was like, uh, so how we gonna, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do, like, with towards, who who song it is? He's like, you trust me, just give it to you. Just trust me, I'ma get. He just put it, just you, just give it to you. And I was like, I ain't, I ain't get it. I ain't get it. I was, I was thinking like if I do it to him, put it on his name, it was gonna be more different. But I ain't get it until like after like he just, it was a gift. Um, there was this video. Where I think you went to a your was it your old high school or something like that? Yeah. When you said uh all the rappers that, that y'all like are all dumb as fuck. <laughs> Why I said that? You said that. Uh I probably saw. You don't believe me? I'll pull it up. No, nah, I probably you probably right. <laughs> what was that about? All the rappers dumb as fuck. Um I ain't gonna say they dumb as fuck. It's just rappers like they wild, man. They they wild, but they, you know I, I'm I'm part of like I was in that lifestyle, but you know it just you know I don't know it's I don't know man I probably just talking be honest. Okay, a couple of videos around where you're you're boxing. Yeah, boxing. Yeah. Is that something you're serious about, or is that just you playing around? Yeah, I was playing around, just not okay. here about a dose or getting them, giving them a little you know smack. All right, so so I saw. Let's see. You and Tory Lanez were boxing. Yep. You and Lil TJ were boxing. You and Blueface were boxing. Mm -hmm. Out of those three, who are the best boxers? None of them. <laughs> <laughs> all trash. They're all trash. Yeah, none of them. So you're saying you handled all three of them? For sure, yeah. Okay, because Blueface kind of kind of tall, right? Yeah, but you know, it's, we all we all was good. Like we always we all we always getting at it. To be honest, TJ was doing the most. Really? Yeah, TJ got them hands. Like I fuck with little TJ shit. Like he got them hands. You know, like he gonna stand his ground. To be me, I'm like the, the compatible. Like he gonna like he young. He gonna he gonna get with me. I mean, were you guys close? You and TJ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, that's bro. That's bro. Like he good. Okay, so when you heard what happened to him recently, man, that's devastating. Man, I f crazy. That's what I'm saying. Hey, like, bro, good nigga. Like, he good. Like, man, take care of all his people, too. I, I, I was shocked, man. I mean, especially when it was in Jersey. Like, I don't know what it was. I think so. Yeah. Hey, have you been talking to him recently? No, I didn't talk to him recently. Okay, because I heard he's out of the hospital. Yeah, man. But, but he was like in, I heard, almost critical condition. God bless him, man. For real, he, he really got through it. That's, that's a blessing. I mean, I mean how, how is it? Because, look, we talked about the whole Jacksonville thing. We talked about how ugly things get over there. And, you know, of course, Boosie, you know, when I did the interview with him, he had that famous line about how ro most rappers get killed yeah. in their own city. In city. You look at, for example, Jay the Youngin situation. Yeah. Who I interviewed around the same time they interviewed you, right. like 24 years old, shot dead. Right. How often do you go back to Jacksonville? Um, I try to go back every probably three months. Okay. Yeah. To your old neighborhood? Not to my, yeah, to my mama. I just go see my mama and my family. She still lives in the same neighborhood? Yeah. You didn't even try to move her out or yeah, she's, she, you know, she got another house, but she don't want to get out of Jacksonville. Yeah, she in a different house. Like she got home. <sighs> that's, that's the problem with, with folks that, you know, start to get a little older and get Yeah, she don't want to get out of Jacksonville, but I definitely got house, you know, a house and stuff like that. So so what happens when you go back to Jacksonville? 
and, and, and love word, word starts getting around that YK is yeah, back. Yeah, they, 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 they show me love in Jacksonville. They don't, they ain't no haters. They gon' they gon' you know, they, they hard up though. They not, they're not easy, but if they show you love, they show you love. If they don't, they don't fuck with you. But isn't that the problem? Because it's like, you won't get the same type of love that you'll get in your old neighborhood. That's how I be though. You know, but you also won't get the type of hate that you get in your own neighborhood. Yeah. Because number one, you can't help everyone out. Yes. You know, I don't know what your crew is like now, but you know, you might have a couple dudes that you fuck with that you, you know, brought along and everything mm -hmm. else like that. But there was probably some people who felt that you should have brought them too. And they yeah. sitting here with Since you. Since I've been young though, I never had that type of crowd. I always had one person, two people, okay. my whole life. I never had that type of people. Do, do you feel any, any sort of like, okay, look, man, if I hang out here a little, a little too long, you know, something may happen. Yeah, yeah. So let me just cautious. dip Very in, cautious. dip out. Maybe cautious, for sure. Okay. Have you ever had a situation of any sort where it's like, all right, man, like, I don't know. A lot of time, but I just, I be, I be quick. I be gone. Does that bother you? Mm, it's, it's the life I live. So I just, be, you just gotta move strategic. Just move, you know, move quick. So the first album was The Golden Child. Yeah. That was the official album. Yeah. Ever since then, I feel like it's been EPs and compilations and, and so forth. Am I right on that? Uh, after, after that, I ain't really dropped like that. I probably dropped like one song, two songs. I think. Right. Because, I mean, I'm looking like you dropped Set Me Free, Think About Me, yeah. Leave Me Show Me Free. Uh, Set Me Free was on with Lecrae. It was a feature. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Lecrae. I've interviewed him before. Um, and then like the next thing to come out was Valentine, but that was a compilation of some joints that were already kind of out before. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's right? a compilation. It's you know, Worth It is on it, Ride is on it, Fake No More, Mind Game, Sexual. Then you drop Love You Down. Then you drop The King of R&B. Yeah. Right. No. But isn't that a compilation also? No, it was all a compilation, yeah, yeah. It was awesome. You know, some couple, some label type of shit, yeah. Okay. And that had the Worth It remix. Why why'd you choose Tory Lanez and Ty Dollar Sign for that remix? Um, I loved um I loved their voices, so I wanted to hop on it like they got, you know, and they killed it. Okay. You and Tory Lanez kinda had a little bit of back and forth recently? Yeah. Doesn't seem like it was that serious though. No one that serious. It was what, just what was it really over? Um, just him laughing, you know, making jokes. I just felt like if you gonna laugh, just make sure you be post my stuff too. Like show love. Because you know, the industry, you know, nobody owe you nothing in the industry. Remember that. You know, not at all. You don't got no friends. You know what I mean? But it is a type of, you know, love they can give you. Because with me, I'm going to repost your shit. I'm going to make sure I do certain things, especially if I fuck with you hard. You know, and, and this, this, this shit, like, it's very competitive, man. Like, you know, everybody aiming for your head. So it's like, you just got to keep your head on the swivel and just, like, go hard and, and know that nobody owe you shit. But, you yeah. know, I was with Tory Lanez two days, three days ago, so I was like, you know, if you're going to laugh at me, just make sure you just at least post, repost, you know what I mean? Mm. Because, you know, everything ain't funny games, but sometimes it's like, man, I ain't got time for all that. But I mean, bro, cool, that, bro, he, he bit bro, so it's no problem. I mean, Tory got the whole thing, you know, the whole situation with Megan still hanging over his head. How is this whole mentality these days without getting into the details of what happened? About what? Well, you know, the whole alleged shooting situation, he's still facing his, his case right now. I mean, uh, is, is he okay shit. with it? Cause you know. Shit, I don't know, it ain't my problem. Shit, there I, you have it. I, 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 I stay out of that type of shit. There you have it. Yeah. On the King R&B, you and Kehlani did ride together. Yeah, right, yeah, right. How, how did that come together? I just called and got on it, she just got on it. I just already had it. That's simple. Yeah, she's gonna, she got on it as soon as I called her. She, she, I love her too, she's, she's phenomenal. Yeah, she's dope. Yeah, she's she, dope. She, she's dope. Yeah, she's definitely dope. She's and, and, dope. And it's interesting, like, I don't know if you ever see her her early shit. What was it, like, America's Got Talent or something like that? Where she was a, kind of like a chubby mm -hmm. little, little kind of girl in a group. She yeah. turned into this whole kind of mm -hmm. sexy, tattooed sort of, like, I mean, it's interesting just seeing someone like that evolve yeah. into the artist that they're supposed to become. Sure. Uh, and that song went dumb. 42 million streams. Yeah, it's nice. Fuck. What, what, why did you, so you picked her to be on that? Yeah, I picked her to be on that. Okay. And you just felt that that was just the right? Yeah, Kalani, yeah. And she was like, fuck and she it. she killed it. Okay. Now, now that compilation is called King of R&B. Yeah. 
you know, whenever you put a crown on like that, it's yeah. I well, it's, I, it's named the king, I named that king R&B. No, I didn't name it. Okay, so yeah. who, who named my, it? My label. They put it without together. without your permission. Is this what you're saying? Nah, but it's a compilation. Like they just do that. Like they'll put it together. You know what I mean? Like you know. But yeah, I ain't, but you, I, I didn't know. To be honest, I didn't know they did that. Okay, but once it's done, you still got to hold that. You know, you can't be like, no, nah, man, that's the label. Don't you know? I'm what not saying? a king R&B though. You so, don't consider yourself the king R&B. No, because you know, I mean, Chris Brown is. You know, <laughs> Chris Brown's still living. Yeah, he's, he's and, like and and he he got. He I got, like I love Usher though. Hmm. Yeah, I love Usher. Okay, so here's an interesting question. This is something that Boosie talks about a lot. He said that no one, no living human being right now, could see R. Kelly in a versus. Yeah, I mean, you still feel that nobody could beat R. Kelly in a versus? Hell no, not even Mike. He not would smoke Mike. Michael Jackson ass. What about Usher? Oh, she will smoke us ass. Anybody. <laughs> you better go get God to create some fucking body. He will smoke anybody ass in the world. They know that. They know that. That nigga uh, moonwalk the shit off Michael Jackson ass. Like, everybody know that. They just don't want to admit it. I'm going to speak the real. He, who got more hits than him? Let's talk. Uh, R. Kelly. He's, he's one of the greatest, man. Would you say he's the greatest living R&B singer right now? In I like Usher. So you would you would put Usher over R. Kelly? I like Usher, and, there, and there's there's an argument for that. You know, I mean, I even brought up Usher when when me and Boosie were, were were talking about this. It is certain things, you know, you like like R. Kelly fire, but it's just certain things mm -hmm. just like it just make me it turns me off a little bit. You know what I mean? Just like oh, you just, mean like the shit that he's yeah, locked up for like, now? Yeah, it's like certain things, just like like you could be great all you want to. It's just like you, it's just certain things you gotta uphold. You know, and it's, it's it's cool. It just I just love Usher. Like Usher's he's 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 that nigga. R. Kelly is too just like um like he did a lot of things that don't got like that don't make sense. No, I feel you. I mean listen, I, I was around when, when that tape, that original tape was circulating. Yeah, it's, you know it's, what I'm saying? I saw that. I'm like, oh, he he was uh, with a he's molesting a little girl right now, and, yeah, and, just, and he got away with it. I just like turn it all, turn the whole thing off. Like, I feel you for sure. I mean, were you surprised when he got the 30 years, or did you feel like he deserves it? Man, I I don't I don't feel like no man deserves jail. No man in the world like that's for animals. But I do feel like yeah. yeah so jail, so so no your man, your worst enemy. My worst enemy. I don't put no jail. If someone if someone did something heinous to your mother. You you would you no would jail. not want to see that person no, in jail. No, no jail. It's gonna be it's gonna be worse than jail. It's not gonna be. It's gonna well, what? But but not. I mean, I I understand when people say this, and and I understand where they're coming from. But I guess if you look at the next logical step, what that person's really saying is, I don't want to put that person in jail because I want to take the law into my own hands. But it's not. But it's not even that. It's just like man, karma's a bitch, bro. This man, this un, this understand you do something crazy, it's gonna come back ten times harder. And if you just chill back and just let it happen, and you ain't say nothing, it's gonna happen, and it's gonna happen ten times harder. Like it's just like that. Like it's gonna it's gonna come around. It usually does, but there's some real you know rotten people in this world that died of old age that you know got yeah, away just, with this shit. Yeah, I just don't really believe in people going to jail. But somebody happened to my mama, it don't got nothing to do with no jail. That's not got something to do with me at the end of the day. Like mm -hmm. you playing me now. Like my mother is my 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 baby. So I ain't like that's a whole other different situation. <laughs> the law don't even gotta deal with that. You have two kids now. Yeah. Okay, how old were you when you had your first one? I was 18. Okay. Was that uh planned? Or no, no, it's just a moment that first that night. First night. Yeah. Okay. Is yep. she in the industry at all or just nope. Okay, so Where you met her. Y'all slept together the first night. And uh, what a few months later she called you and said she was she was pregnant. Yep. So here you are a teenager and, and she's how old? Uh I think she's nineteen now. Okay, she's so nineteen now? Yeah, she's twenty, but I think she's twenty. Okay, yes. so, so you guys were both eighteen. Yeah, so yeah. you guys so you have two teenagers. Yeah. Who are having a baby together? Yeah. Did she have any sort of job or career? Mm, she no. was just fresh out of high school, pretty yeah, much, right? just school. just like you. Yeah. Except for you actually have a, a serious career. Yeah. And she's still trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. When you first heard about the pregnancy, were you excited or were you scared? Um, to be honest, I like that's with anything. The lot is owned up as a man. Like I, don't, I wasn't tripping. Like, 
Okay, okay. bet. Let's okay. do it. Okay, so there was never a talk of an abortion or anything else? I don't like believe that. in abortions. Really? Why is that? It's just, that's my thing. Like, I made a baby. I, 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 know, what I, I know what I did. And I feel like, you know, I ain't about to, I'm not about to risk that, like, put my child through that because of my mistake. Like, okay. And I feel like that's going to make me the man I am today, and it did. Okay, is it a religious thing or just a, just just a me, philosophy I just, I just don't believe in that. Yeah. Okay, all right, fair enough. And that's, and that's uh, you know, I mean, when, when you hear, for example, like Roe versus Wade got repealed on a federal level and... Does Florida still allow abortions? Is that one of the abortion states or no? I know, I know Atlanta, I know Georgia, oh, you can't I, have I an abortion think, there. But you know, with that, it's, it's, you know, like a woman should deserve to, a woman should deserve to, you know, um, to decide on if she want it or what she don't because they got to care for nine months. So I agree with that. Like, you know, these dudes be putting babies in all these women is they want to leave as soon as they, as soon as they had a baby, so I feel like the woman should decide to if I want to have this baby, if I don't want to have this baby. I agree. Like, I, can, I was I was always pro abortion. Well, yeah. really, I was always pro choice for the woman. Yeah, it's a pro choice for you sure. You know, you could, you know, and and I think the the problem when you you make abortion illegal on a federal level is that most times when 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 a man and a woman, you know, when the woman gets pregnant, usually the abortion is is the agreement that the couple has together. Yeah, yeah agreement, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like both people will sit down and say, okay, what, what are we going to do? And the woman will say, well, I want to keep it. And the man said, well, I don't think we're ready. And the two of them will have yeah. a conversation and finally come to a conclusion sure. that works, that, that both of them agree on. Mm -hmm. And then they'll either go to the abortion clinic or they say, no, we're going to make it work. Sure. So when that choice is taken away from both people, it, it fucks everyone. It doesn't just fuck the woman up, it fucks the man up as well. For sure. And, you know, if you really think about it, like I remember reading this, this book about how they explain how when they, when they made abortion legal, 15 years later, the crime rate went down in America. Yeah. Because suddenly all these kids that would have been born in these yeah. bad situations with parents that weren't ready, teenage right. parents and so forth. See, your situation's a bit different because you could financially support the baby. Whether you're with the woman or not, she's going to be okay. Yeah. The baby's not going to be on welfare. He's going to be all right. Yeah. He's going to be all right. But there's not too many YKs out there that yeah. are that are in this type of situation. Sure. So I, I was fucked up when I heard that shit. You know, things happen, man. But I just I just don't believe in abortion. So okay, and and that's and that's that's straight. So so you guys had the baby. Yep. And is she she live in Florida? Or? Yeah, she live in Florida. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you guys didn't stay a couple. No, because you guys were never, we never really a couple. We never, we never was in a relationship. Okay. So, so how does that work out in terms of co-parenting and everything else like that? It's beautiful, man. Like we just we we keep it, you know. We how we talk, my son. Like I say him whenever I want to. It's all okay. love. What's his name? King Kingston. So you kind of named him after you. Yeah. Y K stands for Young King. Yeah. Dope. Um, does it? Do you feel bad to a certain degree that you don't get to live in the same house as your son yeah. and see him every day? For and, sure. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Maybe I, miss I, I his would, first steps or his first words or anything else like that. I would love, I would love my son to love me. Any of my kids, stay with me. They good for life. Yeah. Make sure. I okay. got time for my child. So. And then was it this year that you had your second baby? Yep, Amiri. Okay, and that was with uh, Stasia, Stasia. Yeah, Stasia. Stasia Thomas. Yeah. Now she's like twice your age. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah, she, she, she. Yeah. I, what's the age difference between y'all? Huh? What's the age difference? <laughs> <laughs> Some years. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she, she, you know, she's beautiful though, man. She's a good person, man. Okay. Was that one planned? <laughs> no, that one planned. Were y'all in a relationship? We never, we never was in a relationship. Okay. Nah. Are you just not into condoms? Huh? Condoms. Uh, not with her. <laughs> because we, we we like I don't do that with multiple people. Only one person. If I'm in it, like if I'm in it like that, we we talk like we constantly seeing each other. Like we just had a bond. So yeah. Okay. So she got pregnant. Yeah. Does she have kids already? No, first kid. This is her first. Yeah. Okay. So now you got baby number two. This is a uh, boy or girl? Oh boy. 
So now you got two boys. Yep. Okay. And your second, uh, your second boy's name is what? Amiri. Amiri. Yeah. Okay. Amiri Josiah Williams. So, but you're not in a relationship with her either. So now that you had two kids, did it did it make things a little more complicated and, and so forth, trying to split time? Nah, they both cool. Like, they both chill. Like, they ain't on that type of time. It's all love. They good. They good. Okay. Any baby mama drama at all? Nope. None at all? I don't never have baby mama drama. Okay. And you take care of both of them yep. and, and, you Whatever know, it's they not they got to take you take Whatever it to court need. or anything need. else like Whatever that. Whatever they need. Okay. Um. Just a word of caution from one man to another. You know, I interview a lot of dudes out there. And I remember I interviewed this uh, this basketball uh, NBA dude named Eddie Curry. He had a baby with his high school sweetheart. He was paying child support for 17 years. And he was, you know, paying for the school, paying for this, giving her checks, cashier's checks, money orders, everything else like that. When the baby turned 17, she took him to court and said that he hasn't been paying child support these 17 years. And he said, no, I have, here's all the receipts, here's the cashier's checks. And the judge was like, well, you didn't pay into the state. So that's all gifts. And he owed over a million dollars. Out of nowhere, I get a call like, dad, she kicking me out. I'm like, huh? Kicked him out. He come, he, she lets him, she finally lets him come, come live with us. He goes, he, he uh, attends his senior year out here. A couple months later, not even a month later, I'm getting served with papers for back child support because I never went in and cha and modified my child support from 16,000. And I, I, and I had been giving her money the whole time. I would just give her cash. I would send it to her account. Um, but I wasn't paying it through the state, like whenever. So they basically went in and said, all right, well, you didn't pay the state of Illinois. So basically you didn't give her nothing. And I'm telling the judge, like, look, I got documents. These are these are receipts from cashier's checks. These are this is over a million dollars I've given this girl. They're like, no, nah, that was a gift. If you didn't give it to the state of Illinois, that was a gift. I'm like, are you serious? So you know what I mean? Just a word of caution. You know, you're still young and, and doing your thing and you think you're doing the right thing, but over time, sometimes relationships, you know, and, and everything don't quite work out. So whatever you do, make sure it's being paid through the state yeah. and, and make make sure you do it right. Because it's that shit could bite you. And, you know, the money you're making now may not be what you're making 10, 15 years from now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because not everyone's hot forever. Yeah. People have their run. And, you know, yes, there are the ushers in the world that just keep going and going and going. But not everyone has that type of career. Sure. You know, yeah. you wasted your first million. But once more money started coming in, did you start investing? Yeah, in? did yeah, you start yeah. I started saving more, for sure. Okay. I got more money and more money and more money and more money. Okay. And how'd you start investing it? I got a couple properties. Um, I got a lot of things I be putting my money in, stocks, stuff like that. Stock went down. Yeah, I'm a big stock investor. Yeah. I actually put all my money in stocks. Yeah, I know they, I know your shit look bad right now. Not really. Actually, this is a good opportunity to buy more. Yeah, you're gonna go back up in a minute. Probably like a month or two now. Every time that you've Anyone's ever invested in the the S and P five hundred? If they waited like three years, it's always gone back up. Always, always, always. You know, so so the whole thing is, you know, how did you really learn to really start investing your money after wasting a bunch of it? Just ask people around me, what should I do? And they start telling me like, you should put your money here, put your money here, put your money here, put your money here. Okay. So when you say you're buying properties, what kind of properties? You said what? When you say that you're buying properties, what kind of properties are you buying? Oh, these little like twenty five thousand dollars houses, ten thousand dollars houses. You can get houses for ten thousand? Yeah, like where? Jacksonville, Florida. Like really? So these are what like like rehab properties yeah, yeah, that like you gotta properties that you gotta fix up. Okay. Put like thirty, forty thousand dollars in it and then split it up, set it for like yeah. Oh, so you're, you're flipping. Flip them. it, flip it, yeah. Were you actually renting them out or, or just flipping? Oh, um, flipping it and then selling it. It's flipping it probably renting up. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, when you, when you put your music together, is, is there something where you really take the beat and you spend like hours and hours and hours really writing to it and, and figuring out the melodies? I freestyle. Or, so you freestyle? Yeah, I just get in the booth and freestyle. So you hear the beat? Freestyle. 
every song. Every song. Yeah, I don't really write. I you, don't write at all. You've never written? No, never. Is there a reason? I just be thinking whatever comes to my head. I just be doing it. Like, that's... Okay, so you mean to tell me when you did worth it? Oh yeah, it's freestyle. Thirty minutes. That song came together in thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. That shit came together quick. Ride. Like an hour. Yeah, like an hour. We did that song quick. Okay. I mean, when you made a certain songs like that, did you know that, yo, I, I, I got something on my hands right now? Yeah, I know, they, I, know they, I know they'd be good music. Like, it'd be good music. Like, I just make good music, so. Yeah. I just be knowing, like, they, it's, it's a good sound in me. It's a good sound. Okay. So are you surprised? Are you ever surprised that certain songs you make aren't hits? Yeah, for sure. Everything in the way. You got to keep shooting. Yeah. You got to keep putting through the line. I mean, when you look at your catalog, right? When you look at your discography, it seemed like like 2019, like that was your year. Yeah. You're talking about uh, songs with hundreds of millions of views. Yeah. But but as you go down and you, you're getting closer to 2022, the songs don't seem to be getting those types of numbers. Yeah. And you're obviously aware of that. Yeah. And why do you think that is? And do you feel that, like, for example, you know, the, the social media antics that sometimes you get involved in are overshadowing the quality of the music? Um, I just been been focused on myself, man, and, and it just, you know, me. I I've I been like on social media playing a lot. You know what I mean? Like, and um, not taking myself as serious and. Hmm. And um, just losing focus, and it's all right. It happens. You get lost in the sauce, and I didn't drop it, man. I was taking long to drop. I dropped like a year later, two years later. I dropped like a year and a half later, and you know, your momentum it, it swerves down. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it happens. Like it happens all the time. I always say, like the music industry is. I feel the hardest business to be in. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Like, like what I do. Like for example, like I, I know before I sit down about how many views this interview will probably get. Thanks. Right? You know, I have I have the type of questions I'll ask, and I'll be like, okay, this will get a million, this will get about five million. And yeah, sometimes it'll, it'll deviate a little bit, but I, I got a cool idea. But when it comes to music, you can get Usher on a song, and, and the song could end up flopping. Yeah, for sure. Just because the song just sucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just both of y'all are on your A game that day, and it's just no one's fucking with it. For sure. And whatever else. And, and it doesn't matter. And you could have, you know, Southside produce it and, you know, it's the hottest beat. Yeah. But for, for whatever reason, that magic doesn't come together facts, that day. Facts. It happens. It all happens. The time. And, and how much pressure is that as you're as you're trying to chase those numbers like you used to have? It's not no pressure. Really? I just know it. No, I fuck no. It's, uh, it's just, it just, you got to come with it. Like, you just got to know that. You got to structure the right way. It's like, hey, bro, get back on your grind. And... My fans, they my supporters, and everybody know, man. Like I'm a superstar. They know that I got that. I got it in me. They know that. They just know. That's why I've been, like, I ain't been dropping like two years, and I'm still reveling as hell. Like, okay, right? Because when well, you drop "Be My Girl," yeah, recently, like, yeah, was it a couple weeks ago? I think. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's part of an EP or, or album. You're gonna be part of my EP. Okay, what's the name of the EP? Um, man, I'm, I'm gonna call it "Don't Blame Me." Why Why that name? Don't blame me because everybody always blaming me on some bullshit. So, I, you know, it's a lot, a lot of things in my life that I get blamed on a lot that don't got nothing to do with me. It's just part of my lifestyle. Right. I mean, you have been through some bullshit uh, along the way. Like, I remember, um, was it like a kid who died at a, was yeah. it an amusement park? Yeah. And then you you paid the funeral expenses. Yeah. But then the family said you never paid. Yeah. But you really did pay. Yeah. What, what was that about? Miscommunication. That's all, man. I give my prayers to the family, to the to the kid. Um, it was coming back communication. The mother is um, is very. She's very. Um, she's very helpful, man. She was very helpful. It just bad communication just happened, man. And I wanted to go to the 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 um, the boy funeral like very bad. It just just it was just everything was moving so fast, and I got I get it. You know, the mother was. Very, you know, it, it, I get it. So it wasn't no thing, man. It was bad communication, man. Um, I send my prayers out to the family. I love them. Like it just, it was just moving so fast in the moment, you know. I mean, how much did you pay for the for the funeral? Do you remember? Uh, I think fifteen, twenty. 
Okay, fifteen twenty thousand. Yeah. Was that annoying that you actually go and cut that check and then suddenly all over the blogs it's like, oh, YK claimed he paid and he didn't pay, and you know you paid, and yeah, it's just yeah, like it's, you know, it's it's all it's, I do everything from my heart. It's, I don't be even worried about none of that. You know what I mean? Like internet cool, but I do everything from my heart and just like I said, it's all love. It's just you know, it's all love. Right, because then there's all a situation. The only reason I mention it is because it's now gotten worked out and everything got dropped. But remember, there was a whole situation that you, you bit your ex, your ex girlfriend. Bit. Well, it said you allegedly choked and yes, bit it, her. Yes, it was false. And it, it ended up getting dropped. Yeah, it's false information. But that's not your child's mother, is it? Huh? No. Someone else. Yeah, it's false information. Okay, what were you going through? Because. Here information. you are in the blog talking about you bit somebody, <laughs> like it's just crazy. Yeah, it's, it's it's part of life. It just happens. Like things happen. I'm a, I'm famous, man. I'm, I'm, you know, like things just happen. But I don't ever like play like that. Like ever in my life. Right. That's why it's not like things just happen. Do you feel like once the fame came, you became a target? Yeah, you're, I'm a target. So it's just like people go after certain things. It's like it is. It just happens. I got a lot of money. I got a lot of things. You know, and God bless whoever's trying to come for it. But you know, it's never gonna happen like that. Yeah, I mean, it got dropped. Yeah, because it's not true. <laughs> it, it, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about you, you and Blueface boxing. Yeah. And you said that he can't box. Yeah, he, he, uh, he cool. He not, he not like that though. So, so who do you think punched him harder, you or his girl, Christian Rock? <laughs> Christian Rock. Yeah. Yeah, Christian Rock. <laughs> she punched him harder than you. Yeah, it'd be like that though. Like, you know, it's it's life, bro. It's just life, man. It's like you like, you know, you like, you know, it's just life. Things just happen, man. It's just like however they want to put it in perspective, is how they put it, but you just gotta watch how you move. It's all it is. I mean, when you talk about toxic relationships, those two, I think, are the poster children of that type of thing. He offered a hundred thousand for her to walk away <laughs> and she said, No. <laughs> There's no amount of I money. I would have got a hundred thousand dollars quick. Well, I mean, she got her face tattooed. He got she got his face tattooed on her neck. <laughs> I mean, she missing a tooth. <laughs> I mean, it, it's yeah, just yeah. insanity. That's, a, that's real love, right there, man. Is that real love? Real love. Is that what you want? Real love. Y you want a girl, though? I like that toxic shit. You like that toxic shit. Yeah. What, what's the most toxic shit you've gone through in a relationship, or in, in a whatever you want to call it? Um, the girl say, I wish you gonna die, I wish you gonna do this, I wish you gonna do that. Then I just, like, I just kiss her. Like, you know, I can't, we, like, it's, it is toxic. All that shit be toxic, man. Like, girl be mad, they be talking about everything. I'm done, I'm tired of you, I don't wanna be with you no more. Um, go get go get hit by a truck. <laughs> and then two hours later, we in the bed having sex. <laughs> Things just happy though, it's like, it's life, man. It's, 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 it's toxic, by, it's toxism, whatever you wanna call it. I mean, have you ever been in, in a like a serious, serious relationship? Nope. Really? At 24 years old, have you ever had a girlfriend? Nope. No. No. Is it because of the fame and you got so many options and you're city to city? I'm about options. I just, I just, I just live life and want to have fun, man. Just like you know, stay out of the way. So there, was there ever someone that you met that you like? Yo, this is this is the one, like. Yeah, yeah, but that don't mean she is the one because she's, you know, that don't mean that. It's just at the moment, I just feel like that's the girl. Like, I, I, fuck, I, I, go, off, I go off energy. I go off, you know, just being around somebody consistent, consi consistently, and just like being around them more and more and just feeling their vibe and their energy. And it's, you know, I don't, be, I don't give my en energy to everybody. Okay. Is it, because the, is it because the whole monogamy thing that you don't really want to do? Yeah, just, I just like I just don't fuck with it. Like I just give my energy to certain people. Can you be monogamous to one woman? Um, <laughs> you can't even answer that. No. Nah. So you can't be. No, nah, I can't. So you just wanna do my thing. Do your thing. Yeah. I'm I young, mean, man. I'm young. I got, I need to go through these twenties and this. Okay. I'm 22, bro. I'm young. But if you mess with someone, are you okay with her? Doing her own thing too. She can do whatever she want to do. So you're not tripping. Nope. She so she can sleep with whoever she wants to sleep with. Do you it. can sleep with whoever you want to sleep yep. with. And y'all together. Yeah. Y'all together for that day. Let's go do that what you night. Do. I can't control no woman. You know, if she sees you out with someone else. Yeah. Then she need she need respect. You respect it, man. Respect. You can't you can't put no a woman through 
to them type of times. Okay, you never had women fight over you and find out? A lot of times, yeah. Lot really? Of times for sure, yeah. Like how bad? Bad. Like, fist fights? Yeah. Wait, you had two girls fist fight over you? Yeah. Were you there when it happened? Yeah, I had to stop it. Okay, so you messed with two girls. Neither one of them was your girlfriend. No, it's just I was at a restaurant with one, and then one saw her, and then... Oh, okay, what, what kind of restaurant was it? Like a high-end? High-end. Okay, so you with this nice-ass, fancy restaurant. And listen, I've been to Ruth Chris and seen fist fights break out. Yeah. You know, I remember on Valentine's Day at Ruth Chris, I guess a dude had brought some other girl, and his girl showed up, and, yeah. like, they flipped the table yeah. over, and it was just... Yeah. Just, just... It was fun. crazy, man. It's, you know, it's, it, was, it was petty, but it happened. So so you, you were having a date yep. with this one girl at a yeah. nice restaurant. Yep. This other girl that you were messing with walks in. Yeah. What happens next? No, nah, the other girl walked, the other girl, she was on a date too. Like She was with a dude too? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, but so, it, so why I is think, she mad? Because they, they didn't fuck with each other. Oh, they like, knew each other? Yeah, they already knew each other already. Did you know that they knew each other? Um, I I really like, no, I just knew they didn't like each other. Like, I knew they didn't like each other. Like okay. I knew there was some pressure, like some animosity. Okay. And then girls, they got to it. I just got to it. Like, it's like, yeah. Right. So so the girl that was out with the date with the other dude walks up to y'all's table? Yeah, what? Well, well, like, no, she, she confronted the girl I was with. And like, well, right. Like, yeah. But you guys were sitting at a table together? No. No? Separate. Like, she was on some other shit. Oh. Yeah. And then she just saw her, and it's like, she was acting bad. Like, she was like, yeah, it's talking that bull crap, and it's like, and it's snook shawty. She punched her yeah. in the restaurant. Yeah, in front of me and all. I mean, just went, went but down. there was another dude there too, right? Yeah, he was, he went on that though. He was <laughs> chill. <laughs> he said, I didn't sign up for this shit. Yeah. So you had to separate him? Yeah. Do you talk to either girl right now? No. Long time ago. So you, did you ever end up sleeping with either girl after that? Oh, um, yeah, when I was. <laughs> you ain't shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was stupid, right? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, do you have to, I mean, can you blame yourself for some of this, you know, chaos that I happens? Could, I could blame a lot of stuff on me, man. I could blame a lot. Right. And this goes back to the the title of your EP, which is? Don't blame me. Even though there is some blame. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you got the Don't Blame Me EP. Yeah. Is there an album coming out? Yeah, next year. Is there a name for that? Not yet. Okay. Are there songs for that? Not yet. Okay. You know, and when, when you look at the people you worked with, it's it's a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, a lot. I mean, you pretty much worked with some of the best out there. Yeah. I mean, are there are there really any artists out there that you really are trying to work with that, that you haven't yet? I want to work with Bruno Mars, The Weeknd, mm. SZA. SZA? Um... Brent Fayez, I want to work with them. Okay. You and Snoop work together? Snoop, OG. And Snoop was singing. Hard. You don't usually see that. Yeah. Now, how, how did that song come together? It was a dope, dope record. Yeah, I, gave, was I, dope I gave record. that song to him. I gave that song to him. Yeah, I gave it to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, um, I had it first and then I just gave it to him. And he did his thing on it. Okay. You and Russ worked together? Russ, yeah. By my games. Mm -hmm. And Russ is really big on on independence and owning his shit. I don't know if you've seen recently, he actually posted up his like TuneCore earnings where he made like half a million dollars in like I think a month or something yeah. like that, independent. How is that? Because, you know, when you sign to a major label, kind of a give and take, yeah, right? Sure. You, don't, you don't really see the record sales money as much, but you end up becoming a bigger artist a lot of times and the tour money is there and, sure. and everything else like that. So if you could do it all over again, do you think you'd be independent or, or do you like the situation that you're in? It depends. Like, if you want to spend a lot of money on yourself, it just depends. Like, you want to be independent, but everybody wants to spend that money, what, what it takes to do it. Russ put a lot of money in shit, like millions. Like, a lot of people don't want to do that. Yeah. And, and he produces his own yeah, shit and he as well, so he's sort of like a self-contained. So it'd be like, you could be independent, but like, are you ready to do that? Like, or you want some shit that could have you running? Like, it's, it's all it's all different speeds, man. Like, it's different. Right, because you're still on Def Jam right now, right? Yeah. Is there like an, 
like a certain number of projects that you owe them and, and then you're done or? Yeah, a certain number of projects I owe them. So, so how many more projects do you own Def Jam before you I done? think like three. Three more? Yeah. Are these EPs considered projects or? No, not considered. So three full albums? Yeah. So you're going to be there for a while. <laughs> I mean, right? <laughs> yeah. Have, what, so it's a four album deal pretty much? <laughs> yeah, it's cool. <laughs> okay. I mean, why, why, why not just drop an album then? Why not make this, you know, don't blame me, just an album, throw a couple extra songs on there and boom, that's an album. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, I don't know. Um, I want to do an EP first. I ain't tripping. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. You, know, you talked about how you would put Usher at the top of your heap in terms of R&B singers. If you were to name your top five R&B singers of all time, excluding yourself. Um, Usher. Usher is one. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. We got four more. Um... Um, um, Avant. Avant. Okay, that's a name you don't hear very often. So Avant is number two. Yep. All right. Um, Chris Brown. Okay. You, you put Avant over Chris Brown. Okay. I mean, I, I can see an argument for that. Yeah. Um, Genuine. Hmm. Um, Drake. People don't give Drake. Drake is actually my favorite R&B singer. Yeah. I would, I would actually, like, like real talk, I think I would put Drake, no, like, in terms of R&B singers right now, in terms of... No, wait. I, I'd, I'd put Jodeci over Drake. Jodeci, yeah. Jodeci, I, I'd, I'd put Jodeci good. number one, Drake number two. Jodeci was good, though. They, they, they got like Jodeci, too. I think Jodeci changed the game. Like, I feel like Jodeci was, like, that's the R&B group that, like, you know the men really connected to. Right. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, like R&B until Jodeci was very much like a female oriented art form. And then when Jodeci came in, it was like, pfft, you know, songs like Fiendin, you know what I mean? Or it was just like, yo, like, I think like dudes really felt that shit to, to their soul. But yeah. Well, well, I mean, do you think Drake is a better singer or rapper? He do it all. Mm. He both, uh, he, 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 he the goat. You fuck with the new album? Every album he does is lit. I like it, man. A lot, a lot of people gave him gave him a hard time over doing house music, but yeah, but he could do what he want to do. He gave he gave us smashes for the last ten years. Every every year, yeah. Every year, nobody does that. I mean, I mean, you could say he's the biggest artist in the world right now. He is. He's the biggest biggest artist in the world right now. Right? Biggest. Can you actually beat him in basketball? Because you know he he puts up his basketball clips, but I feel like. You know, we don't really see he, the whole he, game. He's he all right time. basketball. He know all that. But he, he, he nice, though. He, he, can, he can get some hoops. Really? Yeah. One-on-one, -on -one, you versus Drake? Me, all day. Really? Yeah, yeah. Man. You, all day? Me, all day. Yeah. Okay, who who could beat you? Like, who, who in the musical world Nobody. could beat you? Nobody. Nobody. J. Cole? Nobody. J. Cole, who plays? No. Nope. Nobody. Okay, J. Cole tall, too. He it's cool for him. It's good for him. Nobody. That's <laughs> a one-on-one -on -one you can beat J. Cole. Nobody can beat me one-on-one. -on -one. Chris Brown pretty nice too on the court. No. Nope. Have you ever played Chris Brown? No. Nope. Doesn't uh, matter. He said, he said I played him. Yeah, plenty of times. You played Chris Brown. Yeah. One on one. What happened? I won. Really? Every time. You were that nice I'm on nice. the court. I'm nice. I'm really like that. Two chains. Me. Have you played two chains? He's not nice like that. He not nice like that. He tough for no reason. <laughs> Cause he was a, he was a college star at one point, I believe. Yeah, he don't play basketball like that no more. No. He be shooting, but he not. He cool. I'm best. I'm the best um, basketball player in, in the music industry. In the music industry, in the yeah. music, you were the best basketball player in the music industry. Yeah. And you're how tall? Five ten. Five ten. It don't matter. It don't matter. So you're the Allen Iverson yeah. of of R and B. Yeah. You fuck everyone up. Yeah. Height don't matter. Yep. Is there anyone else? Hold on. I I, I got Lil Durk. Huh? Lil Durk. Lil Durk. Lil Durk is nice. Yeah. He trash though too. <laughs> He he just be putting up he just be putting up um he just be putting up um um he just be putting up um clips that that's gonna that's gonna go viral that he make him make him look good but I shut all that shit down. Okay, hold on, Quavo. Trash. Quavo's trash. Yeah, basketball. You trash. played you played on one on one. 
Yeah, you know, he they not, but they not like that, bro. I'm like that for real, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm like that, man. Master P, Master P actually played thing played for the Pelicans like a while back. Now he's a little old in the tooth, you know. I mean, a little long in the tooth right now. He's a little older. Man, the youngest got this right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> the game six three. Not Bill. Me. No. Not Have me. you ever played the game? Nobody not beating me. Nobody's beating you. Nobody. You'll put money on it. Whatever. Whatever. Nobody not beating me, man. Nobody's beating you basketball. No. These, these are very strong words right now. Yeah, nobody's not beating me, man. Okay, so so why why waste your time with R&B when you can go make $100 million in the NBA? I don't care if I'm NBA like that. Okay. I will do my music. You'll do music anyway. Yeah. Okay. So what's coming up next for you? I might drop my EP. Right. I'm about to, go, I'm about to, I'm about to take over some shit. I got to do what I got to do, respectfully. That's what it is. YK Osiris, man, listen. We get a lot of new artists. I mean, I think we did one of your first interviews ever. Yeah. Um, and, and it's always dope when, when someone comes in and four years later, they go six times platinum. Yeah. They got a bunch of songs with hundreds of millions of views. And, uh, you know, they get features. They're doing shows that are sold out. I've seen some of these shows, man. The fans go go crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love me, man. You know, and, and that's not promised, man. Like, like you're in a situation, because I've interviewed probably over a thousand artists over the years. And, and you know, a lot of times they do that interview and, that, and that's it. That's the last time you hear from them. Yeah. But, but you, you, you flipped it. You know what I mean? You have really escalated what, what you're doing. The music has improved, um, you know? And like you said, and I, and I think it's dope that you were honest and like, yeah, man, like I've been a little off my bag recently and, you know, I've been not dropping as much as I did, but, but, but you're not blaming that on anybody. Yeah, no you're like, sure. okay, I got to just step it up. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? And, and man, listen, I'm, I'm happy. I, I always love when, when people that I interview go on and actually do shit. And uh, this interview almost didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? This, this interview was sort of a flux. Was, was there a reason why it almost didn't happen? No, uh, you know, it, it just really, to be honest, just, you know, it just, I be moving a lot, but I be a lot of things be on my mind, so I just be like, really just like, you know what I mean? But I'm here now. You're here now, and I appreciate it. That's man. all that matters. That's all that matters. And that's some real man shit. For sure. You know what I'm saying? I wish you all the best, man. Until next too, time. Man. Peace. Right.